In the 1850s, Japan emerged from two centuries of near total isolation and began aggressive industrialization and modernization using Western ideas and technology. And within 20 years, Japan had spectacularly transformed itself from a medieval feudalistic society into a modern prosperous state, placing particular emphasis on building up its military to the level matching those in Europe. Then in the 1870s, Japan set its sights to emulating European-style imperialist expansionism, turning first to Korea, on which it used gunboat diplomacy to force a commercial treaty. Japan's interfering in Korea made conflict with China inevitable, as Korea was a tributary state of China, and in its first test as an emerging power in the First Sino-Japanese War, Japan decisively defeated China in Korea, the Liaodong Peninsula, and Taiwan. Japan's expansionism also came into conflict with Russia, as Russia also harbored territorial ambitions in the Far East. Earlier in 1858-1860, Russia had acquired Outer Manchuria from China through treaties with the ruling but weakening Qing monarchy. Then in the late 1890s, China and Russia signed a number of treaties, including a military alliance against now-rising Japan, but these treaties allowed Russia to gain greater control of Manchuria. Then in 1900, with China reeling in the ongoing Boxer Rebellion, Russian forces outright invaded and occupied Manchuria. Then in violation of a provision in the peace treaty that ended the Boxer Rebellion, Russia refused to withdraw its forces from Manchuria, provoking Japan. Since 1896, Russia-Japan relations had begun to deteriorate when the Korean monarch sought Russian protection because of Japan's meddling in Korea's affairs. In 1901-1903, Japan and Russia held talks to try and resolve their competing claims to Korea and Manchuria, which ultimately failed, leading to the outbreak of war in 1904. In a series of naval and land battles, Japanese forces overwhelmed the Russians and in the 1905 peace treaty that ended the war, Japan gained control of Korea and Manchuria. By then, the Western powers recognized Japan as a legitimate power among their ranks, a position further cemented in World War I when as part of the Allied powers, Japanese forces took advantage of the Western powers' preoccupation with the war in Europe to seize German holdings in the Pacific and Shandong province in China. After emerging victorious in its war with Russia, Japan established military and economic control over Manchuria, although Manchuria continued to be legally a part of China. By this time, China's ruling Qing monarchy was fatally weakened from a myriad of problems, internal unrest, natural calamities, and more precariously, foreign intrusions into its territories. Then in October 1911, an anti-Qing revolt broke out that quickly spread across much of China. In February 1912, the Qing Emperor abdicated, which also ended 2,000 years of dynastic rule in China. After a chaotic period of power struggles, in 1916, China fragmented politically and entered a long period of warlordism. But in 1920, China achieved reunification under Chiang Kai-shek and his Kuomintang government. Meanwhile in Manchuria, vital to Japan's interests in the region was the South Manchuria Railway, which the Japanese used to exploit the territory's vast natural resources, including coal, mineral ores, and forests. In 1906, to protect personnel and infrastructures, Japanese authorities formed the Kwantung Army, which was soon dominated by radical officers who desired that Japan take a more aggressive foreign policy. In the late 1920s, a number of Kwantung army officers drew up a plan to invade Manchuria, but contingent to only if China provoked a war that would justify such an invasion. When presented with the plan, both the Japanese high command in Tokyo as well as the Kwantung army commander in Manchuria gave their approvals for invasion, again only if China provoked a war. In 1928, the invasion plan took on more urgency after China's reunification and also because Chiang Kai-shek's government began to re-establish civilian authority in Manchuria as well as start construction of rail and port facilities which would directly compete with existing Japanese-controlled rail and port facilities. The new Chinese government also announced its intention to reclaim foreign-held properties and infrastructures.
On September 18, 1931, a Kwantung Army lieutenant carrying out a plot prepared by other Japanese officers detonated an explosive on a railway track near Makden. The explosion caused only minor damage. However, the incident became the pretext for Japan to accuse the Chinese of armed provocation and justify Japanese military retaliation that would subsequently lead to a full conquest of Manchuria. Following the railway explosion, Japanese forces captured Mukden, and Kwantung Army units all along the South Manchuria Railway moved to seize towns and cities throughout Manchuria. When informed, the Kwantung Army commander was initially livid that military action had been initiated without his approval, but was eventually won over and cabled for more troops to be brought in from Korea. As well, in Tokyo, the Japanese government was stunned by the sudden outbreak of war, but also ultimately gave its consent and sent more troops to Manchuria. Within a few days, the Kwantung Army seized much of Liaoning and Jilin provinces, and Japanese authorities co-opted many Chinese military commanders, warlords, and officials who organized local and provincial administrations, replacing the deposed pro kuomintang governments. By January 1932, Japanese forces had seized all of southern Manchuria, with Chinese forces offering no resistance and withdrawing south of the Great Wall into Hebei province. In northern Manchuria, in November 1931, Japanese forces came to the assistance of collaborationist Chinese army units into Heilongjiang province, capturing the capital, Sitsihar, in November 1931 and Harbin, the last Kuomintang stronghold in Manchuria, in February 1932. By then, Japanese forces controlled all of Manchuria. Subsequently, many Chinese resistance groups formed across Manchuria, carrying out guerrilla warfare against the Japanese. But by the late 1930s, a series of Japanese pacification campaigns had quelled the uprising, with the last of the guerrilla bands fleeing into Chinese-held territories or into Siberia. To provide legitimacy to its occupation of Manchuria, in February 1932, Japan established Manchukuo, purportedly an independent nation, but in reality a puppet state of Japan that received little foreign recognition. At the start of hostilities, on the appeal by China, in October 1931, the League of Nations demanded that Japan withdraw its forces from Manchuria, which was rejected by the Japanese government. Then following a report by an investigative commission, in February 1933, the League of Nations rejected the legitimacy of Manchukuo and declared that Manchuria remained legally a part of China. In response, in March 1933, Japan withdrew its membership from the League of Nations. During the Japanese invasion, Chiang Kai-shek's forces were unable to mount effective opposition for a number of reasons. First, despite having reunified China in 1928, Chiang Kai-shek struggled to maintain absolute control, and large parts of China remained de facto autonomous and dominated by powerful warlords who pledged only nominal allegiance to Chiang Kai-shek. Second, even Chiang Kai-shek's own government was racked by a power struggle. Third, Chiang Kai-shek also faced a growing communist insurgency, which in the years ahead would become a major threat to his authority. Chiang Kai-shek also deemed that China was as yet militarily incapable of facing Japan in open battle. Manchuria comprised only one part of Japan's broad program of establishing a sphere of influence and control throughout northern China. In January 1933, to secure Manchukuo, Japanese forces invaded Jiahol province, pushing the Chinese army south of the Great Wall into Hebei province. In March 1933, Chinese and Japanese officials negotiated a ceasefire, eventually signing a truce that created a demilitarized zone. However, their forces continued to skirmish in the demilitarized zone, prompting Japanese authorities to issue an ultimatum and display military force as a warning. As a result, Chiang Kai-shek's government acquiesced and withdrew altogether from Hebei province, which then came under Japanese control. Elsewhere, in 1933, Japanese authorities took advantage of an ongoing Mongolian separatist movement in Chahar province and co-opted Mongolian nationalists with promises of military and financial support for secession. 
Then following a strong Japanese diplomatic protest against China after a minor military incident in Chahar, in June 1935, China agreed to cede control of much of Chahar to the Mongolian nationalists, whose forces then seized control of the rest of the province. In 1936, Mongolian nationalist forces launched two offensives that failed to capture neighboring Suiyuan province. But in 1937, another offensive with covert Japanese support captured the province. In September 1939, the Mongolians formed the Mengjiang United Autonomous Government, whose jurisdiction covered Chahar, Suiyuan, and northern Shanxi, territories that were still legally under Chinese sovereignty but wholly under Japanese military and economic control. In December 1936, China's long period of appeasement and acquiescence ended when Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist government and Mao Zedong's communist guerrillas forged an alliance to confront the Japanese army. Full-scale war between China and Japan would break out eight months later, in July 1937.